Coming up on Signal by Sony, we're hanging out with Android developers while they hack away at new apps. And more first looks at brand new Sony gadgets. Signal by Sony starts right now. Hey everyone, thanks for watching Signal by Sony, a show about everything Sony makes. I'm Samia. And I'm Anthony. You know, the world of developers is one that I am in awe of. These guys are amazing. Some of the most popular apps for mobile devices were made by one person during an all-night coding session. That's absolutely true. And you know, it's really the apps that make the device, whether it's iOS or Android-based. Right, and with that in mind, the very first Google TV hackathon recently took place at the company's headquarters in Mountain View, California. About 60 teams of developers competed in a weekend-long challenge to come up with some of the most innovative apps for Google TV. Check this out. So this weekend, we are holding the first ever Google TV hackathon. Uh, it's a hackathon focused really on getting developers in here to learn and to be very creative on developing uh, Android applications on the Google TV platform. My name is Ash, and we're building um, an application that makes the television extremely intelligent. And our app is called My Picasso. It's an app that allows you to draw um, basically like a drawing canvas on the Google TV. I'm Patrick and I'm part of Team IMO. The project we've decided on is some sort of interactive games that you can play, like some short games you can play during commercial break. My name is Salim Majd, and this is our first Google TV hackathon. So we're gonna rely on the social network to find movies and have our friends recommend movies to us. My name is Kent William Inhalt. I'm working with three other uh, developers on an app. We didn't really have a clear idea what we were going to do when we when we came here, so we sort of like brainstormed a little bit back and forth. The wiki.com website is a community of uh, fan-made subtitles for well, all sorts of series and uh, movies from around the world. When we got invited to the hackathon, we thought it was a great opportunity to bring it to yet another platform. If we can pull off a fun uh, and entertaining game in two days, that's going to be pretty impressive. We're halfway there. We got the basic app. You can use the touchscreen to do everything, but now we're going to integrate his physics into the, um, the device. Many of the teams are starting from scratch, and we have something to base it on. So we just have to do some tweaks on the layout, and I think we got a pretty good chance here. <laughs> I don't know. We feel like we're kind of just trying a lot of different things, we're still very indecisive, but I think we're excited and that's the important part. So as long as we're like hacking on something, we're gonna have something fun at the end of the weekend. This weekend's been going fine. I don't know what we're gonna show on Sunday, but we're totally committed to this platform and this technology and we believe in our vision. So this is just a, another step in the, on, on the path. I think there's lots of smart people here, lots of good ideas in here. Uh, so that makes it even more exciting. But I know we're gonna win. If you want to know the final results of the hackathon, just visit the official Google TV blog. And for more info on Sony's internet televisions with built-in Google TV, go to Sony's website. Okay, as promised, we're going to give you a first look at some brand new stuff. Earlier in the week, a member of the Sony team stopped by our studio with the new hotness. Take a look. Joined now by Kenta from the digital imaging team. You're one of my favorite people to see because you always bring <laughs> fun new cameras for me. What are we looking at today? So we're looking at the NEX F3 today. This is the N successor to the NEX C3. Okay. Just to remind you, this is a mirrorless camera, what they call a mirrorless camera, so you can see directly into uh, the sensor. Yeah. And that's an APS-C size sensor. Okay. You can see there, cool. So, so they, uh, the entire NEX line so far has been uh, APS-C as well. So Correct, yeah. that's as big as some of the, the Alpha DSLRs and stuff, the oh, full yeah. body stuff. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so what has changed about the F3 from the C3? So a lot of core technology has changed. Um, the resolution is ma maintained. It's a 16.1 megapixel image sensor. Okay. But um, it's combined with the latest Bion processor. Okay. From the A77, actually. Oh, very cool. So now you're able to shoot in very low light. It, the max ISO is 16,000. Wow. So that's what a, was the max on the on the C3? That's a 12,800. Okay. So this is a huge difference. It's a huge difference. Awesome. Yeah. So what uh, what else is new here? We've got uh, the, the improved sensor. Improved. Probably means that there is some new video stuff on this Correct. too, right? Yeah. So with the new processor. Now we have uh, full HD, 1080, 60i video, and also 24p. Okay, cool. And the uh, the C3 was uh, 
720p MP4. Correct. Yeah. So this is the 1080 at mm -hmm. the AVCHD. So you can shoot using your NEX X3 broadcast and broadcast quality video. That's so or nuts. Or even, yeah, even <laughs> shoot cinema like you know movies. Awesome. So what other new stuff are we going to see with the F3? So we introduced something um, called auto portrait framing, right? The A57, yeah. Yes. If you remember. Yeah, and that's cool. That's the one where you where you take a picture of somebody, and it will automatically kind of compose the picture and crop right. it for you to make it more attractive. Yep. So that's on the NX S3. The cool, cool thing about that feature is that it really teaches you how to shoot better photography, but yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, because you'll take a picture and you'll be like, I think I got mm -hmm. that pretty much perfect, and then it'll just crop it and so, like so, and you're like. Oh. oh. So next time, next time. Next yeah. time. Very cool. And uh, there's some other hardware changes here, too. Yeah. I'm noticing the screen looks a little different. Screen looks a little bit different. Um, this is the really cool stuff. Watch this. OK. Wah, bam. Wah, hey. <laughs> so now you can shoot yourself. Very cool. So well, you know a, what a narcissist I am, Kenta, <laughs> so that's great. So it has a self-portrait mode. OK. Oh, you can shoot it like that, or it'll have a uh, three-second counter. Okay, well. cool. And that pops up on the screen, mm -hmm. so I know. Yep. That's very awesome. And, and can you shoot video like this, too? Correct. So I'm also noticing... It's a little bit bigger, isn't it? A little bit yeah. bigger. And you'll be surprised, because we have a built-in flash now. Very cool. So this is very handy. Um, what so we... that's coming down from the 7. Until now, the right. only other NEX camera that had that was mm -hmm. the 7, 7, right? Yep. So, so cool. yeah, we heard a lot of user uh, feedback on this one. And you know, we had the, uh, the flash included into the kits, mm -hmm. but people f forgot to take them with them. So we yeah. built it into the, uh, the camera. Very so cool. Yeah, very one convenient. less thing to carry around. Correct. Comes yeah. in handy, for sure. So it looks like we're seeing a lot of stuff trickling down from the higher end SLR lines. What else are we seeing in the NEX that's new? That's a really good point. Um, there's also a feature called clear image zoom. Okay. And it's like digital zoom, but a little bit better. Okay. Because what, inside the camera, it has all, a big database of patterns and all these scenes. So when you're, when you're out in the field and when you're taking pictures, uh, the, if you want to digitally zoom using clear image zoom, uh, it's picking up those patterns and okay. interpolating all the missing pixels for you. So let's talk about battery life on this one. You've added a lot of new stuff. How does that affect the battery life? Yes, so now the electronics are completely new. So from the C3, you had 400 shots per battery charge, mm -hmm. but now it goes all the way up to 470. And also it has USB charging. Oh, so that's so good. On the, when you're on the go, when you're traveling, you can just charge it on your laptop or you can I forget my charger like all the time. Yeah. Like all the time. And I've looked at it before and I've looked at my laptop and I've looked at the USB cable. Mm -hmm. and I've just been like, why can't I just? Exactly. So <laughs> That's awesome. One less thing to carry around as well. So along with this, I'm sure, come some other new goodies. I have a lens right in front of me here. Tell me about this guy. It's a beautiful lens. It's an 18-200. Dude, look at how far this just went out. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those of you who know, uh, there was an 18-200. We're not yes. replacing that lens. This okay. is uh, a smaller version of that lens for the, uh, the still imaging side. OK, cool. So what, what are the differences between uh, between this lens and the, and the older 18-200? The older 18-200 lens is a kit lens for the VG10 right. or the VG20. OK. And that's really meant for video usage. But this one, if you're on about, you know, when you're traveling light, you want a smaller lens, yeah. but you want that reach. Right? right, and then the old 18 to 200, because you're using it with video, it's kind of nice to have that wide barrel to do the focusing. Correct. Correct. Cool, so this is awesome. And I, I see this yes. is sitting here too, and I know that in, in the past, if you were a, an NEX3 owner or a C3 owner, you couldn't use the uh, this OLED viewfinder yeah. with your camera. Yep. Does, does this work with the F3 now? It does, because this one has the smart terminal too. So now it connects to where you're in broad daylight, a lot of light, and you can't yeah. see the LCD screen, pop on an OLED. Yeah, and we, yeah, we should mention too, I mean, we've had this on the show before a couple times, but I love this viewfinder because it's not just like looking at some tiny pixely screen. It's just, you would think that you were looking through an optical viewfinder. I so love this thing. It's very store, responsive. Yeah, go to the store, check it out. It's an amazing viewfinder. Awesome. So I'm noticing this, we've got black, we've got white, we've got silver here. Um, when are we going to be able to grab these? So the NEX X3 will be available in June for $600. Very and cool. also the 18-200 LE lens. Uh, that will be available uh, in July for 850. Tell me about the uh, the Alpha series, the full yes. body DSLRs. What's new there? Yes. So now I have here with me the A37. This is the uh, 
successor to the A35. So this is an entry model uh, camera, but it has TMT on it, so. So this has got the translucent mirror Correct. just like the 77 has and the 55 has. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. cool. So the A37 has a 16.1 megapixel image sensor. Okay. In it. It's combined with the newest um, Beyond processor from the A77, so it's very fast processing, very crisp images. And because of that, um, now you can shoot in a very low light, so max ISO is all the way up to 16,000. So what other uh, improvements come down with that A77 technology? So um, we're still able to shoot seven frames per second, up to seven frames per second in the TeleZoom high-speed shooting mode. Very cool. You love that feature, don't you? I do, yeah, that's uh, my favorite thing yeah. to do. I do it every time, I'll do it this time. Yeah. <laughs> And then it also does 5.5 frames per second at the full resolution. Very cool. Pixels. Awesome. So uh, what else is, I guess with that new processor, there's probably some new updates to video as well. Yeah. So it does uh, 6 Ti, 1080 Full HD, 1080 6 Ti video, and 24P. Oh, nice. So what other new bells and whistles are we looking at here in the 37? So because of the improved software, now it has enhanced object tracking. Okay. So um, for a lot of DSLR shooters, video is becoming really important, but one of the main problems that a lot of people are having is that um, it's really hard to autofocus. Yes. Now, autofocusing definitely helps when you have TMT, right? Because mm -hmm. it's always autofocusing while you're shooting. But um, with the enhanced object tracking, now you can lock on to a sh subject and it will always track that. And it's enhanced because right. it not only does it the, do uh, face, facial recognition, mm -hmm. but once you lose that face, for example, if I twirl around, look in somewhere else, okay. the object tracking goes from the face to the body. And then once the face comes back on oh, the cool. screen, it'll uh, come back. And you guys have also added, uh, you have the, re the auto mode, mm -hmm. intelligent auto, but you have the superior. Correct, auto yeah. on here as well. So if you're familiar with uh, our CyberShot line, mm -hmm. now all the nomenclature is the same. So okay. uh, you have auto, which is just scene recognition. That's very common in the industry. But what's different about superior auto is that now it's combining that scene recognition with multi-capturing modes. So if I'm in uh, uh, HDR mode, mm -hmm. I'll capture three pictures, so uh, mid-tones, highlights, and then shadows, and then combine it into one image. This also has an upgraded viewfinder as well, yeah? Yep, so on the A35, the magnification was a little bit smaller, but now it's uh, all the way up to 1.19, uh, 1.19 uh, magnification, so it's much easier on the eyes. Very cool, and is there an improved resolution in there as well? It's a 1.4 million uh, resolution. Wow. That's cool. And uh, so obviously, new body, new features, usually comes with new lenses, right? Correct, yeah. What, what, what is this guy We're here? I'm excited to show you this one. Uh, it's an 18-135 lens. Uh, wow. I'm pop it on here. It's a very popular lens uh, because it gives you not only the 18, the wide angle, but mm -hmm. also all the way to 135. So that's, that's just a like really a good, good walk around uh, every yep. sort of situation lens then. Mm -hmm. yep. Awesome. So Kenta, when can we get our hands on the A37 and the new lens? So there's a couple combinations here. Okay. With the A37 and the 1855, that's the regular uh, kit, that'll be available for $600 in okay. June. But um, if you want the lens alone, the 18-135, you can buy it for $500 in July. Okay. But this is an awesome deal. With the A37 and the 18-135 kit, that'll be coming out in August for only $800. So that's only $200 more than the 18-55 kit. Oh, that's a cool little upgrade there. Yeah. And we know that the 18-135 is a really uh, uh, popular lens that a lot of people want. So we're also kidding that with the A57, the A65, and also the A77. Oh, cool. So this becomes just available across the board then. Yep. Awesome. Well, that's our show for now. But if you want to watch more Signal, just head to youtube.com slash signal or sony.com slash signal. And be sure to watch us on the go by downloading the free Signal by Sony app for iPhone or Android. This is Anthony Insomnia. See you next time.